Greetings. Here I am in Osaka, and I just wanted to show you one of my favorite things about being here. Uh, Osaka, and I think probably every big city, but especially every big Asian city, has these underground, um, I call them cities, but they're basically tunnels under the ground that go from building to building. And along the way, there are stores and restaurants. You can buy clothing and medicine and food. There's grocery stores, there's sea stores, bakeries, all kinds of stuff. So just imagine going from building to building underground with the people of Osaka. It's my favorite thing. Well, it's one of my favorite things about being here. So I'm going to take you down there and show you around. It can be very, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see how disorienting it is to be down there. All right, let's go. Hello. Hello. I can't I don't. I'm good. I leave tonight. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. She asked me if I needed service because I haven't let them in my room for. Look, I'm going on day three now. I never let them in my room. I just kind of keep it clean as I go. Center on the same plaza as the hotel is on, and uh, I got some practice to do before I'm comfortable walking around with people watching me on my little camera stick here. But it is what it is, and the Japanese are so shy they won't make eye contact. Well. They'll look at the camera, but then they'll look away. They won't talk to me. So I guess they're more shy than I am. I'm going to take you on my most common route. And uh, I'll try to point out some of the things that I think are just amazing. So I'm stepping out of the hotel. And I'm right into the ladder. Right into the ladder. In case you didn't hear that. Uh, one of the most amazing things that I see is the people crisscrossing right here. And I'll try to get a good shot of it. It's, I'd say it's about 50% as crowded as usual. Thank you. 
go left or right here. I'm gonna go straight. I'll go straight into the train station as well. And that one is where I usually go. See how confusing this is. Yesterday I was I headed out to get my Japanese curry. I went straight down there where the Christmas lights were. About five minutes in, I realized that I'd never been there before. So I wasn't sure how to get across. I tried to get across to where I thought it was. And uh, it didn't work. So I backtracked. See those girls with the Yankees hats smiling when I had the camera on. Let me give you an example. So like I said, this is a tunnel to another building. All of this is underground network to other buildings. This goes up to the street. Sometimes you can pop your head up there like a gopher and see what's going on. The risk of popping your head up there like a gopher there is you, you really have no idea where you're going. And the buildings are in the way, so usually it's really hard to figure out where you're at. Okay, this, I, I know this little rotunda really well. There's like five directions. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven directions. I can go either kitty left or kitty right. I'll take the right one because it's kind of a cool area up here. And then there's another building. Half the time, we won't even walk down to the mailbox. Yeah, long. Walk to work. Walk to get our food. One of the reasons that Americans might be thicker. It's pretty early yet, so these shops are closed. The grocery store is still closed. First few times I came down here, I would just walk in these loops and I'd see the same thing over and over and over again. But I just couldn't fathom or figure out how to get out. So here's something that I've seen quite a lot. And they decorate this different every season. And I've seen these skylights up on the road before when I was trying to learn how to get in and out of here. birds. Um, it is um, artificial, well I don't know if it's artificial bird sound, but it's a recording. So usually, especially in the afternoon and evening, this is all open. All these garage doors, a bunch of shops, but, uh, tea, green tea, everything, pancakes, crepes. Waffles, ice cream, coffee shops. Um, a lot of people sitting and socializing. So coming up on one of my, it's been one of my go-to places, but if I'm gonna try to have a little bit better cardiovascular health, I need to make it one of my least favorite places. But it's Vire France. Let me show you what's magic about this place. May I introduce you to Melon Pond. Melon Pond. It's the Melon Pond. Uh, unfortunately, it's cheap. 
and it's extremely delicious. And uh, usually when I come to this hotel, I'll grab one of those. Uh, they have different flavors of mom pong too. There's a cherry or strawberry one, but just the plain one. It's basically a cookie that's uh, cooked on top of a sweet roll. Uh, the carb load's pretty low, actually, so I really don't think there's a problem with eating it. Now while I'm here, uh, I ran out of water, so, oh, I forgot my backpack. So I'm gonna buy one water, get a drink, and then we'll continue the tour. I'm gonna buy the water here at Family Mart. The main sea stores you see are 7-Eleven, Family Mart, and Lawson's. But it's probably gone. But can you imagine? Uh, well, let me just tell you. So one of the more, more challenging things is finding places to eat. It's really kind of scary. And like the people, for example, the people at 7-Eleven, I was trying to figure out, you know, if this coin, not that one, but another one. I was trying to figure out. Is that five? Is it 25? Is it 20? She, she didn't know what the heck I was talking about. So I just usually hold out my hand and then start taking uh, coins out of my hand, but it's hard to figure out where you're gonna eat. So sometimes I just look at pictures and I'll look inside, and if the people look patient and it's not busy, then I'll go in and eat. But I'm getting a little bit more brave now, where I'll just go in and sit down and uh, point point at pictures, and then uh, sometimes I'll take the iPad and have a translate app that helps. So uh, do you think so? So right there behind me is the Viva French Bakery. Your way back. Nice. Here we go. Off again. So this Viva Bakery, you'll notice she's carrying a tray. I don't know if you can see it or not. But what you do is you pick up a tray and you just put your pastries on your tray and then you go pay for them. I'll take you down here a little further and then we'll turn around and go back. There's a lot of chain restaurants, just like we're in America. Oh, there's also Burger Kings and McDonald's. I saw several yesterday uh, inside the train station. But there's other like Japanese chains. One of them is called Coco's, and they serve Japanese curry. and notice the sign here. It says Osaka uh, Dianai building. I have no idea. Like if I was up on top, I don't know why like, I have any idea what building that is. But uh, anyways, and then there's access to more trains over here, and more hallways. I'd like to peel up this one. It's, it's actually kind of fun to get lost up here when this is all open. Different shops and restaurants. That first yellow sign there is um, Coco's. 
well. And show you. So I, I hear almost every time I come to Japan, I get one of these. Uh, they have a little card. Um, you know, it's kind of boring because the garage door is closed. Anyway, we'll wind our way back to the hotel room. Stop at the restroom. Uh, so I'm heading back, taking a direction that I'm not familiar with. This, this, this store here would be like a pharmacy. Yeah, so it's like a Walgreens almost. Actually, now they're looking there, maybe more like a Dollar Tree. a place. I look at the pictures. I read the Japanese. And that's very, very common for it to look like that's the entire restaurant. Maybe 12 bar stools. Uh, I've many times I've seen it much smaller. Okay, I can already tell that's not where I'm going to go. I've been back there before and get lost. So this is going in there another building. But I think I can get back to where it was this way. So here's another restaurant. Um, it feels completely safe here. Uh, when you're in Hong Kong or China, not that safe. It doesn't feel that safe. It might be that safe. And then I've been South Korea. I've never been underground in South Korea. The places I've been in South Korea feel very safe. You're so overwhelmed by it all that you're not quite sure. Um, but I've learned that that last one, JR, Japan Railroad, Osaka Station, that gets me close enough to figure out where I'm at. And then if I want to go through there, that takes me to the Umida, ET Chow. No idea where that's at, but it sounds cool. It took probably seven or eight trips down here before I could get before I was able to get in and out without it completely turning around. And even then, like yesterday, I got turned around and plus one completely and the second time I just missed my turn. So, for example, I can take one of these. I learned yesterday I can take one of these to the hotel. But I'm not sure which one. It's not labeled. It's not 
this. So it enables the building next to the hotel, but it spits me out essentially the same thing. So I'm going to go off to the left here. And the way that I remember this is a good story of life. This is my first vlog. Stopped four times on the way up. People got on, people got off. It usually doesn't, but when we stand in hotels a lot, it gets annoying. There's been a convention here today, so quite often going down to the lobby, the hotel's been, or the elevator has been stopping every floor. It's so annoying. Just down there, enjoying the sights underground of in the labyrinths of Osaka. <laughs> 